Good afternoon. My name is Mike Ansaport. I'm a fourth year surgical resident at Mayo Clinic in Florida. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the program committee, um, and our moderators and sages for the privilege of the podium and the opportunity to present our work um, entitled Laparoscopic Repair of Giant Parasophageal Hernias, Other Factors Associated with Anatomic Recurrence. These are our disclosures. Um, one of our co-authors and medical director for uh, two medical device companies. The rest of the authors have no um, relevant disclosures. Hiatal hernias are not uncommon in the general population with an incidence between 10 and 50 percent. The incidence is known to rise with advancing age. Um, parasophageal hernias comprise a minority of hiatal hernias at 5 to 10 percent. More than 90 percent of parasophageal hernias are type 3 mixed sliding and parasophageal hernias. Roughly half are symptomatic of reflux. The operation is generally indicated to symptomatic patients or those with obstruction or volvula. The first high volume case series of open repair via thor thoracic and abdominal approaches were published in the 1940s. Laparoscopic approaches were first described in the 90s. Despite two decades of laparoscopic approach to parasophageal hernia repair, anatomic recurrence rates remain high, as seen here with these notable case series. The anatomic rate of recurrence ranges from 10 to 66 percent. The objective of our study was to ascertain whether there are particular patient operative or surgeon factors that uh, significantly um, contribute to anatomic recurrence after laparoscopic repair of giant parasophageal hernias. As far as definitions, um, sorry, <coughs> to do this, we analyzed our patient population undergoing laparoscopic uh, repair from 2008 to 2015. Um, 595 such patients underwent operation by five surgeons at our institution. Uh, we define giant or large parasophageal hernias as those greater than five centimeters um, from the diaphragmatic pinch up to the superiormost part of the stomach that's herniated. Uh, we define anatomic failure as any imaging evidence of any size of any recurrent hyalur hernia, which differs from many other series which may use a cutoff of greater than two centimeters. Of these 595 patients, we excluded those who are undergoing a revisional operation those who had inadequate follow-up with regard to imaging, and those who underwent concurrent con uh, confounding operations such as bariatric procedures, a resection of GIST, cholecystectomy, esophageal diverticulectomy, and repair of parahiatal hernias. We excluded those patients as well with hernias less than five centimeters. This left us with a final study population of 202 patients. Of these 202 patients, the vast majority were female. They were also el elderly with a median age of 71 years. The majority were overweight with a median BMI of 28.7. Uh, these patients had undergone prior thoracic operations, 1% of cases, abdominal operations, 69%, both in 4%, and about 26% had no such uh, history of abdominal or thoracic operation. Uh, about 20% of these patients had a personal history of uh, other abdominal hernia. Symptoms-wise, these patients had regurgitation in 39% of cases, heartburn in 34%, dysphagia in 36%, uh, chest rapid gastric pain in 26%, and exosophageal complaints in about 15% of cases. Imaging was used to assess preoperative parasophageal hernia size. The median size was seven centimeters or range from five to 12. Majority of stomachs um, were intrathoracic in 23, 25% of cases. Uh, the vast majority were type three at 96%, uh, type four at 9%, type two in 19%. <coughs> Uh, type 2 and 1%. Endoscopic findings prior to operation included, uh, were similar to those in typical reflux patients. Um, notably found that more than 20% had evidence of Cameron erosion. Motility and pH testing were available in only a minority of patients. Um, of these, 12% who had undergone manometry had abnormal relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. Um, the majority of those who had pH testing did have Demeester scores greater than 14.7. Uh, we note that the vast majority of operations were conducted by two surgeons, uh, surgeons A and B. Um, surgeons C, B, and E had a total volume of 24 over a seven-year period. Uh, with regard to particulars of operative technique, which were surgeon-dependent, high mediastinal dissection was performed to, to enable a median length of intra-abdominal esophagus of three centimeters with an interquartile range of 2.5 to 3.5 centimeters. Collis gastroplasty was necessary for a foreshortened esophagus in 7% of cases. The median number of anterior crural sutures was one, posterior was four. The median number of pledgeted sutures used was two. Crural buttress, um, which consisted of use of biosynthetic material, was used in nearly a quarter of patients. Uh, gastrostomy was used in about 57% of cases. 
our near-term near mortality rate was 0%. Um, our morbidity rate was 6%. Um, these cases consisted of uh, intraoperative splenic capsular injury in one case requiring splenectomy and an enterotomy requiring a small section in one other case. Uh, these were re recognized immediately and intervention performed at the time of the index operation. Um, we had no uh, <coughs> early uh, unplanned reoperation. Um, other complications included UTIs, atrial fibrillation, alcohol withdrawal. Um, readmission was um, uh, occurred in six cases uh, due to dysphagia in three cases, pneumonia in one case, hyponatremia in one case, and uh, nonspecific abdominal pain in one case. Um, the vast majority of patients underwent an upper GI on post op day one. Um, none, none of these patients had an immediate recurrence. In a similar fashion, there were, uh, again, no early unplanned reoperations. Our overall rate of anatomic recurrence um, was 34.2%, or 69 out of our 202 patients. Symptom resolution was largely successful with recurrent symptoms in only 10% of cases. Revisional operations were undertaken in 5% of cases. To compare the differences between groups, uh, we did chi-square or Fisher exact test for categorical variables and two-tailed student skew test or Wilcoxon rank sum test for continuous variables. Uh, significance was considered as a p-value less than 0 0.05. We found that all assessments of demographics did not result in any significant effect on the rates of recurrence. We found that the characteristics of the parasocial hernias themselves um, similarly did not have any effect on uh, rates of anatomic recurrence. Uh, we also analyzed whether the presence of volvulus indicating the majority of the stomach was intrathoracic, um, whether that would have, have an effect, and it did not. Of the operative factors, um, notably Quirrell Butcher showed a trend towards reduction in rates of recurrence, but this was not statistically significant. Uh, gastrostomy and need for colis gastroplasty uh, had no effects. Uh, most interestingly, examining, examining anatomic recurrence rates with regard to surgeon volume, we did find an increased rate of an anatomic recurrence with 54% of patients who underwent operation by a low volume surgeon suffered anatomic recurrence as opposed to only 32% of cases performed by high volume surgeons. This was statistically significant with a p-value of 0 0.03. We then performed multivariate logistic regression uh, analysis for variables with a p-value less than 0 0.2, and we found that the effect of surgeon volume remained statistically significant with an odds ratio of 3.7. When plotting the recurrence-free duration of follow-up, we find that the majority of low surgeon volume associated recurrences occurred early on at about the routine six-month follow-up point. In comparison to prior notable series of laparoscopic repair of parasophageal hernias, um, our rate of an anatomic recurrence at 34.2% is uh, similar to the range of uh, recurrence in the other uh, reported series. Even at a high volume center with exclusion of uh, revisional operations, um, and <coughs> uh, describing to the size and concurrent operation um, exclusion of parameters, uh, we had a limited number of patients available for analysis. Um, eventually, we have impl implemented an expanded range or a, an expanded definition of uh, parasocial hernia recurrence. Uh, techniques were not impl implemented in a completely randomized fashion, but more by surgeon preference. Um, the majority of uh, recurrences were sym symmetric um, or posterior wrap herniations. Um, in conclusion, uh, recurrence rate remained uh, was higher than anticipated, and despite excellent technique and selectivity, and we still um, we were surprised by our uh, fairly large. Uh, anatomic recurrence rate. Um, we believe that surgeon volume may be related to recognition of a short esophagus or perhaps dissection technique. Um, we think that there's a role for improved education regarding technique or uh, recognition of a short esophagus um, and having uh, techniques ready for closure of a difficult hiatus um, to uh, help lower the rates of recurrence. Uh, thank you for your time and attention. I welcome any questions. Thank you very much.